Welcome to That's Good Broncos, I am Brandon Perna, and I know you're probably wondering where the fuck have I been. Well, I got married, and I moved into a new house, which means I'm in a new basement, it's a little bit echoey. I'll fix that at some point. So I've been a little bit busy, but let me tell you, it's been like torture not talking about the Broncos for the last two weeks. It's like, at least nothing happened. Simeon named starter, Sanchez cut, Colquitt cut, Elway named to the competition committee, and a Demarius Targaryen Twitter account was created. Well, that, it was actually created a year ago, but I just discovered it. Also, very important news, I need you to subscribe to my second channel, That's Good Broncos. This is That's Good Sports, I'm creating a second channel, it's called That's Good Broncos, and that's where all of the Broncos game reviews will be uploaded from now on. I know it sucks, you've already subscribed here, I'm still posting a ton of content here, but for the Broncos reviews and our safety, I have to do it on a different channel. There's a link in the description, it's called That's Good Broncos, it's not rocket science, just please do it if you want to watch those videos. Let's start with Trevor Simeon being named the starter. I like it. There are a lot of people who just want to see Paxton Lynch thrown in there. And those people are absolutely dead fucking wrong. Let's just all agree Paxton's not ready and move on to why having Simeon start could be the best thing for the Broncos since the releasing of Tim Tebow. We have no idea how good Simeon can be. Anyone who says they've already seen his potential are goddamn liars. We want him to be very good this season. If he's great, then the Broncos have found their starter for the future. Finding a franchise quarterback isn't easy. Just ask the Cleveland Browns. Everyone wants to say he's not the guy so that if he isn't, they can say, see, I told you, he wasn't the fucking guy. That's lazy analysis. Chances are, like most NFL quarterbacks, he won't be great. The odds are against him, so betting on him not being the guy is the easy thing to do here. I'm hoping he is great, and I'm optimistic about that because I like the way he throws and makes decisions. And if he is very good, that is the best thing for the Broncos because then they have a great starting quarterback and a powerful piece of trade bait in Paxton Lynch. Now let's say Trevor Simeon isn't great. Let's say he's serviceable. I don't know, slightly better than maybe Sam Bradford, who was just traded to the Minnesota Vikings for a fucking first round draft pick and a fourth round pick. So come next year, when the Broncos go full on Paxton Lynch, Simeon could be traded for a King's Ransom. If he's just serviceable, then he becomes a valuable backup who knows the system. Simeon being a good backup, say in 2017, could allow the Broncos to only have two quarterbacks on the roster, giving them a spot uh, for another player in an area of need. And the way Lynch plays, there's a greater chance he could get hurt anyway. So you, you want a good backup. Finally, let's say he isn't very good at all. Well, at least you know. And then Paxton Lynch can take over just like everyone expects. And nobody will say, put in Simeon, put in Simeon, if Lynch struggles. Well, actually, people will probably say that no matter what. Finding a franchise NFL quarterback isn't a science, and uh, nothing is certain. We know very little about Simeon, but from what I've seen, he's accurate and pretty cool under pressure. Kubiak believes in his intelligence, which to me is a strong sign that Simeon will succeed and probably be this year's Super Bowl MVP. That's a bold early prediction. Over the last week, I just got a bit tired of hearing so many Denver media members brush him off like his only purpose is to play a few games until Lynch is ready. That may very well be true, but the certainty in which so many experts say this shit is stupid. Simeon will get an honest chance to be the guy, and if he plays really well, he's not going to lose his job. The Broncos have two quarterbacks that could be very good. That's a positive thing. They also have two guys that might suck. We don't know. Nobody knows. Nobody fucking knows. That's the point. That's why this season's gonna be crazy. Now, moving on to roster cuts. The Broncos waived Mark Sanchez, uh, so they didn't have to give up a draft pick, and so they could avoid paying his $4.5 million salary. Sanchez, of course, signed with the Dallas Cowboys while Tony Romo spends the first six to 10 weeks of the season 
healing in a sensory deprivation tank filled with amniotic fluid. Amniotic fluid, although rich in nutrients, hasn't been proven to heal people more quickly. Tony Romo just prefers the feeling of home it gives him. That's a report I read. Cutting Sanchez made sense, but getting rid of Britton Colquitt did not. Riley Dixon may turn out to be a decent punter, but he's pretty raw. And uh, that was evident when I watched him punt every day at training camp. It was magnified in the final preseason game when his first three punts pretty much all sucked. Colquitt didn't have the strongest leg, but he was a fucking technician. Punting is a good thing to not notice because when you do, it's usually because something bad happened. Replacing a veteran punter who was precise with ball placement and consistent could be a lengthy and bumpy process for the Broncos. I'm rooting for Riley Dixon because he can hurdle dudes. Uh, I really am, but how the fuck do you cut this? Brittany Colquitt, who explodes from the shadows with tenacity. Not that anybody cares, but the Broncos also signed Austin Davis to be the third veteran quarterback on the roster. Davis is set to make significantly less than Sanchez's 4.5 million and a shit ton more than the rest of us assholes. The final 53 man roster is set for the Broncos. Here it is. I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but instead talk about a few key areas. Rookies Will Parks and Justin Simmons will officially be the only two safeties on the roster behind Ward and Stewart, which means the coaches feel comfortable not keeping a fifth safety on the roster with experience like Shiloh Ko. However, they did re-sign Ryan Murphy to the practice squad. Choosing between Ko and Murphy must have been a tough decision for the Broncos. I mean, do you keep the guy who was busted in a prostitution sting during the Super Bowl? Or the guy who got busted for a DUI after the Super Bowl? Answer, sex. Always pick the sex addict over the guy too cheap to pay for a cab with his $450,000 salary. Jawan Hammer Pound Thompson is also back on the roster on the practice squad. This is great news after he was initially cut last week. Thompson could play if an injury happens to fullback Andy Janovich or any of the starting tailbacks. CJ Anderson, Devontae Booker, and Capri Bibbs. That's right, the Ronnie Hillman era is finally over. Because the Ronnie Hillman ever never really started. I'm fine with the Hillman cut, um, mostly because he played the worst when it mattered the most last season. Nobody was more excited about the Hillman cut than Devontae Booker, who stole Hillman's number while Hillman was still in the parking lot. Hey, uh, did you guys just cut Ronnie Hillman? Could, so he, I, I could, could I have his number? I mean, it, it's sentimental, it's, it's what I wore in college. I hate to ask so soon, but I would, I would like his number. Finally, the wide receivers are set with six men on the final roster. Demarius Targaryen, Emmanuel Sanders, Benny Fowler, Cody Latimer, who will also be returning kickoffs, Jordan Norwood, and Jordan Taylor. You know him as Sunshine, which is a good nickname, but I think by the end of the season, we will collectively have come up with a better nickname for Jordan Taylor. So start, start sending me ideas on Twitter. Taylor, in my opinion, played really well in the final preseason game. He broke tackles, getting those ever so important yaks. Yak! This is probably the deepest position uh, group for the Broncos, especially with guys like Khalif Raymond and Mose Frazier on the practice squad. Here's the thing, the defense, as long as it stays healthy, should be just as dominant as it was last year. In fact, the outside linebacking core is even better with the addition of Dakota Watson, who had a hell of a preseason, and the development of Shane Ray. The no-fly zone still hates planes or birds or whatever the fuck they refuse to let fly, and John Elway has denied that the team was shopping Aqib to leave. I also predict Derek Wolf will have his best season of all time this year. The areas of concern are the offensive line, and the quarterback position, and the depth behind Virgil Green at the tight end spot. 
This is basically the exact same problem the Broncos had last year. But at this time last year, none of us were worried because Peyton Manning was still on the roster. Manning was the warm, ever so warm security blanket that made us all super confident that the Broncos would be a Super Bowl contender every year. That blanket is gone but it's been replaced by one of the best defenses in the NFL. I'm not sold on the idea that Simeon or Lynch can be great if this offensive line doesn't perform as a cohesive unit. A rookie quarterback with a shitty O-line is a disaster waiting to happen. There's been a lot of shuffling up front for the Broncos O-line, and they got worked by the Rams and 49ers in preseason. Next to staying healthy, the line Gelling is the most important thing that needs to happen for this team to be a serious contender again. I've seen a lot of people getting pissed off that nobody is picking the Broncos to make it back to the Super Bowl. In our hearts, we all believe they can repeat. But our brains should say there are a lot of question marks right now working against them. It's not that they're doomed to be a bad team. It's just that there's so much we don't know about them in terms of what their offensive identity will be that until we get a clear picture of that, every game is going to be exciting because we have no idea what the hell will happen. So yeah, it could feel a lot like last season or it could be crazier or they could be better or they could be way worse. We don't know and that's fucking crazy. Yeah, it would be cooler if we knew they were going to be really good. So again, make sure you subscribe to my second channel, That's Good Broncos. Subscribe here, That's Good Sports. Give me a follow on Twitter, at Brandon Perna. I'm excited for this season. I should have a prediction episode up before the game. If I don't, I am sorry. I am still trying to settle the hell in. Uh, also, for all of your Denver sports, check out bsndenver.com. And for more Broncos news, Mile High Report. Yeah.